The July 14th raw from San Antonio really starts to shape up SummerSlam. This raw is a sellout 7,700 fans paying 116,000 bucks. Uh, it's the largest gate in U S dollars for a raw taping in history. Up to that point, it shows you where the business is headed. The show opens with a heart foundation interview with Vince McMahon. And they announced that at SummerSlam, if Brett doesn't beat the undertaker for that title, he will never wrestle in the United States again. If bulldog loses to shamrock, he's going to have to eat a can of dog food. If Pillman loses to gold dust, he'll wrestle the next night on raw in a dress. And if Austin doesn't beat Owen, he has to kiss his ass in the ring. And if any member of the heart foundation lose, then Jim Neidhart gets his goatee shaved the next night on raw. These stipulations sort of come out of nowhere. I mean, I understand that you, you want every match to have stakes, but it feels sort of weird that he's just sort of running them all down here to start the show. Is this a, a Russo call or, or whose idea is this? I'm sure it's a Russo call. Uh, well, you know, it was the hottest thing we had going. I love that Canadian, uh, USA rivalry. I enjoyed the hell out of it. I thought it was healthy. It wasn't based on communism or, uh, you know, any other kind of atrocity. It was the same thing you see when, uh, you know, uh, watching, let's say, for example, the United States women's uh, hockey team against the Canadian women, it gets big ratings cause it's, it's got something we all can, we got, we're all best in our country in our, in our people. And it's, our, it's us against them. It's a friendly rivalry, but of course in the wrestling world, it got embellished and it wasn't friendly that for that much, uh, for that long, but. Uh, I love that whole, that whole booking. I love, I love the whole situation there, because if you look back at those matches that match his name, Conrad, you got to, here's what you got in that card. You got bulldog and shamrock in a single. There's no reason that shouldn't be a great match. No reason. Uh, you got taker and Brett, with a big stipulation for the title, the title WWE title. And, uh, that's two of the great workers of all time. You got Austin and Owen. We know what happened in the match, but. Exclude that, that match should have been off the page as well. So what you've done in this heart thing is that instead of making a, uh, a, uh, hor- a, a, uh, horizontal booking, <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> pardon me. We, we did a vertical booking. In other words, you take those five guys in the heart foundation and you put them in matches and single matches. So that's vertical. They're not in tags. That would be horizontal. And so that your card has more depth, it has more quality. So it was a good idea. I thought in that regard, I thought that we've probably gotten the game a little bit late on the stipulations, but I think the idea was to make them feel more, uh, spontaneous and they, they're, they're, these stipulations are a result of these actions. So the actions had to occur before the stipulations really made any sense. And, uh, so that's how I looked at that situation. But it was a, I like the, the heart foundation, uh, Austin group and so forth. And it really got good. You know, as we're leading in here, you know, we're going to, Survivor Series 97. We all know what that means in Montreal. So this is a hell of a year right here. A lot of things are being put into place for the long haul with a lot of trepidation again, because we didn't know how Austin was going to be able to, is he going to come back? Can he come back? If you can come back, what's he going to be? You know, there's a lot of questions there that we didn't have answers to. Well, something that is going to be a question coming out of this particular raw taping is what are we going to do with Takamichi Noku? He has great showing against Yoshihiro Tajiri. Of course, we know both of those guys are going to wind up becoming staples with the company. Uh, and apparently he impressed the company enough that you guys are going to take a flyer on Taka and sign him. Um, Bruce Pritchard has talked about, you know, Taka as being one of his favorites and somebody he really championed for, uh, is there anybody else that really caught, you know, was, was taken aback by Taka and thought, man, this guy could be the, d- the deal. Taka was introduced to us by Victor Quinones, as I recall. And Victor had a great relationship, uh, in, in those days with, the some of the new, some of the J- Japanese, uh, offices and, uh, Michinoku pro was a, was a group that he was affiliated with. So we hired, we hired, uh, uh, Taka, we hired Sho Funaki, uh, we hired, uh, who's the other guy, the third, we hired your favorite Dick to go. Sure. Everybody loves Dick to go. Yeah. Oh, Dick to go sponsored by boot you. Uh, and we had, they, and then one more guy, what's the other guy's name? God dang. I feel like I'm losing my men's tail. Yeah. Men's tail. So all those guys came about the same time, but Taka was kind of singled out as he's the best of the four, but quite frankly, the other three weren't bad and hell <clears throat> Funaki, uh, has loved it so much. He still lives in San Antonio. 
let's talk a little bit about, uh, somebody who, somebody else who pops up here only for a moment though, I should have mentioned when the, the heart foundation are in the ring, sort of laying out all these stipulations, Steve Austin comes out, then shamrock, then the Patriot, uh, then Sid, then Shawn Michaels. So we've got sort of an all-star cast here of guys who, I mean, we know we're going to start pushing shamrock. That's very evident. We know Sid and Sean and Austin are top guys, but they introduced the Patriot here and McMahon calls him Del Wilkes, the Patriot. How does this deal come together for him to come in? Is it sort of just natural booking that, Hey, we've got an USA, uh, Canadian, you know, mm-hmm. country rivalry. Let's bring in Dell. Or is there more to it than that? No, I don't think so. Uh, red, white, and blue mask, Yeah, you know, uh, great body, you know, all American football player from South Carolina. Good guy. Uh, he battled some, uh, drug demons later on in his career. Uh, and had had, and I, I was too soft hearted a lot of these things sometimes, I guess, because I hired a lot of guys that you want to get that one more run out of them for their sake. Yeah. And, uh, Vader was one of those guys. Dr. Death's one of those guys. And Dell Wilkes is one of those guys. There are others, but those three, I could come up with off the top of my head. Uh, it just fit. It, he was all, Amer- all America, the Patriot, the red, white, and blue thing. He was a fresh piece of talent. We had not featured a, a mask, uh, baby face, uh, in a, in a, you know, to any significant, at least with any regularity. So it was a, kind of a new act, but it fit the, it fit the motif of, uh, USA versus Canada. It was a, it was a good, good thing there. And, and I think, uh, uh, I thought we did a nice job at least getting Dell on the radar in the early going. This is also the show where we see Sean Michaels do an interview with Shane McMahon and he's begging to be a part of SummerSlam so he can see undertaker beat Bret Hart and send him packing. Uh, it was around this time that you guys had just finished a wrestle vessel trip. Bruce has talked about that a little bit in the archives of something to wrestle. What can you tell us about the old wrestle vessel concept? Well, it was fun. Uh, it was much like the Jericho cruise that, uh, I went on last year, uh, or last, last, was it last year? Yeah. 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 Last year, last fall. Uh, it was fun. Uh, saw a lot of fans that were, you know, spent hard, their hard earned money. God bless them to take probably some of them took vacations. They couldn't afford, but here they were. And you got to love them for that. Uh, but I had a good time. Jan had a great time. Uh, everybody pretty much demanded their manners. I saw, uh, there's some, there's some funny pictures that are still out there. You can look up folks, uh, from the wrestle vessel, you know, you had Sonny on that cruise and that was always a, a wild card. And, uh, and, uh, I can't, I, there's a picture of her and my wife and a bunch of us, but you could just, the body English tells a great story. So if you run across that picture. I'm sitting down, uh, uh, in fr- in the, on the front row, uh, with some of these guys, but everybody had a little story to tell in their body English. It was kind of funny because nobody wanted to let the other guy get over. It was, it was such bullshit. It's so funny in that regard, but it was a success. You know, we had a good time with it. And, uh, of course our friend Chris Jericho is maintaining that, uh, that, uh, wrestling cruising scen- scenario. And I guess this, this next thing he's going to do is doing great. So good for our friend, Chris. Yeah. I'm looking at this picture you're talking about now, and this is, uh, quite the picture. Yeah. See the body English. Yeah. I totally get what you're talking about. <laughs> so check you it out. It? We may post you, it on some of our social media. This is a fun pick. Did you see Brett setting it aside? Kind of d- detached. Yes. And you see uh sunny hugging. Uh, she's not hugging in this one, but you can definitely, uh, you're, you're Ricky Bobby in a little bit. You're not sure what to do with your hands. And Austin, <laughs> Austin's got a great shirt that says, take me drunk. I'm home. This is fun stuff. We'll make sure yeah. we post that. Let's yeah, also talk about, um, the main event of this show, because we see Steve Austin here set to defend the tag titles by himself. Of course, his partner, Sean Michaels is, uh, not able to compete and he's injured. So he's going to be defending these tag titles against Owen Hart and the Hey, Hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell. So you get a notice anytime we upload some new content and go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a 30 year loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money. It's a matter of how much find out right now for free at SaveWithConrad.com.